Okay, welcome back to the 144,000 project. This will be video 23. We're in John. So this is my uh, website. Here's my uh, YouTube channel. Rev9 video. And you can see 22 is the last. So we'll pick back up on our document, which you can download from our website here. New Testament quotes in order. Alright, you can see we're in John. So, we uh, left off. I spent some time on this Psalms 82.6, You are God's, because Christ quoted that to the Pharisees to try to make a point that is Israel people, and here he's talking to some of them, but they're the ones that, who reject him. But, like I said, he didn't go into a, a great thing trying to explain it to them. He just said, you should reflect on this, but... Uh, Apparently they didn't. Or maybe they figure, well, you know, we're Israel people, so we're part of those gods, so he'll save us no matter what we do. All right, well, I pointed out then in John 12, 13, 15, 38, and 40 here. We've already been through all of these, so uh, we'll just glance at this, uh, starting with this one, Psalms 118. Uh, cross references Matthew. Uh, so let's look at uh, first of all, I guess let's look at John 12 13. Let's start with that <clears throat> Just in case uh, we didn't read it before for example, it's Hosanna bless the one coming in the name of the Lord and the King of Israel and of course King of Israel is quoted Psalms, but uh, also uh, there's other quotes about the King of Israel, uh, even Psalms 2-7 is uh, quoted about Christ, so that's why I say if you look at the other one in Psalms, uh, you just kind of go through piece by piece, Old Testament quotes in order, and then scroll down to Psalms and read those order that kind of helps that's a good layout so you see uh, Christ the Son of God uh, Psalms 2 7 see so it's really good to just start in Psalms because look I mean there's just so much stuff in the New Testament out of Psalms and there's the one in John 12 tribes are called gods he says scripture can't be set aside and they're the children of God so <laughs> There you go. <clears throat> it's not just people that call on He says it's the 12 tribes because that's what the prophecy is about. So, like I said, you got to teach it in context or you can just teach whatever you want. At any rate, you can see some of these just have lots and lots of uh, stuff. Now, we're on this one, 118, 25, and 26. So, you can see there's multiple. And we've been through these when we've looked at John. So, at any rate... We've been through that. Let's, oops. Let's go back to the beginning. So we don't really need to look at that. We know what that's about. Uh, let's just go down to John 12, 15. Let's see what that says. Now the next quote. It says, Then Jesus, having found a, an, an ass and a colt, in other words, he said upon it, according to what is written, and that's Zechariah 9, 9, and we've been on that, uh, that's only in Matthew 21, 5. And we've been on that and taught that. So let's go to 12, 38. Isaiah 53, we've been there at least twice. Uh, 12, 38. All right, Lord, who has believed our statement? To whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? Yeah, the arm of the Lord is revealed to his people at the end time. That's the context in Isaiah 53's about that. Romans is the only other quote to that particular verse, but I think there was a, a couple different ones. So if you go over there, Isaiah, and Proverbs, uh, Isaiah 53 is, uh, as you can see, all of that's actually quoted out of chapter 53. So, and even the ones before and after you should look at. <coughs> Actually, that Galatians 4.27, but uh, we've been there, and that's a, Galatians. Is, I should have probably talked more about that. Now, we've been uh, Isaiah 6, 9, and 10, Jews against Christ versus Jews for Christ. 
That's cross references Luke 8:10. So we've been uh, there. As you can see multiple quotes. So we've been through that at least a couple times, maybe more. All right, 12:40. Then the quote here: Their eyes were blind. Their heart degenerated. Right. So they don't see with their eyes, understand with their heart, and return that I might heal them. In other words, they, they don't want the truth, they just want to stay in control, and you know, uh, they don't want to lose their job or their position and their money and their business and all that kind of thing. So that's why people just go along to get along, even if they don't necessarily uh, really believe in what they're doing, uh, they're committed. They're committed financially, and so once you're committed financially, you don't want to go against uh, everybody else. End up getting kicked out of the organization, or maybe losing your life for changing sides, right? Going from Jews against Christ to Jews for Christ, changing sides, and maybe somebody might uh, come after you for that. So yeah, there's a lot of reasons to you stay on that side that you're on. Yeah, so. Okay, Judas Iscariot turns a traitor for money. 1318. Let's look at that. Do not refer to the whole of you, but I know whom I have chosen. But it's so for the fulfillment of the scripture, the one who partook of my bread has raised his heel against me. Well, you know, people think oh, that's kind of has something, same ideas. Uh, Genesis 315, you see, bruising the heel. At any rate, and he's saying also, this is Christ, saying that uh, he chose Judas Iscariot in a sense. So yes, he chose, it's the same concept, uh, the potter over the clay in Romans chapter 9, 22 and 23. The ones that were against Christ, he chose them, he formed them, he made them for that reason. I mean, that's, that's a hard concept, but he, like he said, he can see your heart, so... I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, we can't really uh, decide how all that comes about, but that's what he says. He chose them one side for uh, glory and honor, and one side for common use in Romans 9 and 22 and 23. So it's like he chose the Jews against Christ. He chose who would be the Jews for Christ. He drugged the ones for him. The Father gave them to the Son, drug them to the Son. I mean, you just look at those quotes and you're like wow and mm. <clears throat> yeah, so it's not really about you and of course a lot of people say that so uh, let's look at Psalms 41 9 see what it says over here who all who hate me combine for my hurt yes yeah, so think about kind of that's the whole idea of the uh, all the Jews against Christ getting together to maintain their control, in other words. And then that's what, you know, think of it the other way of like today, all your billionaires kind of, you know, they don't go against each other. They try to kind of work towards a common cause in a sense. They don't want to lose their billions or millions and all that kind of thing. So maybe even if you don't really go 100% uh, sold on what's going on, uh, what other people are doing, you kind of go along with it because you don't want it to hurt your your empire, right? Okay. So they say he's loaded with crimes. When he falls, he will not rise again. Yet that man was my most trusted friend, Judas Iscariot. You know, he has kicked me who ate of my bread, right? So that's the quote. But you get down to 14. Let Israel bless the living God forever. Amen and amen. Yeah. All right, so if you want to look for context, we have some other cross-references and quotes. If you go back, uh, it's 40, it's about the Christ the Rock, and about this uh, Christ the New Covenant, uh, actually goes to 40, verses uh, 7 through 9 approximately. And then he talks about the salvation, so that's salvation to the twelve tribes. So you can find your uh, context. It's about mercy on the twelve tribes and all that kind of thing. 
Christ the shield, so all that's in 40. Redeem. Redemption, and you can just back up. So if you kind of go through this, you see uh, all this about Christ the shield, Christ the rock, and the 12 tribes. And like I said, you just have to go through and pick out the context as you're going along, but then tie in your uh, quotes, which is why you should look at those quotes and go through it, and then compare what you're reading over to the New Testament as you're going along. That helps put all Psalms in the proper context. So you don't need to say a whole lot more about that. Uh, that's the quote. All right, 1525 goes to Psalms 35, so hold your finger on Psalms. Let's look at 1525. See what the quote is. But thus is accomplished the statement recorded in their law, and the law can't be set aside, remember? <laughs> they hated me without a cause. Yeah, there you go, Psalms 35. Oh, and, uh, okay, and I wrote on there. 69.4 is really a, a cross-reference, so it quotes one, and maybe it could quote the other one. We'll look at both. All right, when, however, the helper comes. And you notice uh, when you're reading John there, uh, the helper, it's the Spirit of God, but it refers to the helper or the Spirit as a he. It's, of course, it's Christ. But it says a he when he comes. In other words, so Christ is leaving, but the Spirit of Christ is he, so it's still Christ. That's the point I tried to make from the very beginning. Melchizedek is a he. It's a real person. He's standing there talking to him, but it was Christ. And it was the Spirit of Christ. It really was Christ. Uh, this person promised to Ab Abraham in 15.1 uh, in Genesis. That is Christ. And it's the Spirit of Christ. And when he took the rock, Jacob's pillar stone around, tapped on the rock, that's a spirit. In other words, Christ the rock they carried with them, and they drank of that spiritual rock, as it said in 1 Corinthians 10, 4. Okay? That's the spirit of Christ. They had the spirit of Christ all along. And they were promised the spirit of Christ. That's what Paul teaches in Galatians, and people will try to argue against it. It's just crazy. You can see it in here. You just have to connect the dots. All right, so let's, uh, I wrote on here, uh, okay, Jews against Christ, hate God and Christ without a cause, and they're removed from the book of life because that's the context, yeah. Well, okay, he separates them, wheat tears, gets rid of the tears, all right. And when you're here in Psalms, uh, well, actually in John, in John here, <clears throat> there's some important things that you should notice uh, that, of course, just multiple things here uh, I could go on. But what I should point out, because it's mentioned here multiple times, let's go back to John 14, uh, 15. If you love me, keep my commands. That's Christ speaking. So he's telling you, follow his law, and I will ask the Father, and he will send you this helper. This helper, which I just mentioned over here in 1526, about they hated me without a cause, when, however... The helper comes, who whom I myself will send you from the Father. So the Spirit of Christ, Christ is telling you, I'm going to send you my Spirit. In other words, that's the same idea. Christ the shield, Christ the rock, right? Same thing. That's the helper who helped Abraham. Okay, he's, he's talking about himself, the Spirit of Christ. But when you're back here in 14... If you love me, keep my commands. In other words, follow my law, as he told you a thousand times. And I will ask the Father, he will send you another helper to continue with you forever. And there he says, the spirit of truth, which is him. Okay, this is no change. All the way through the Bible, it's talking about the same thing. Whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees him nor knows him which is these people that rejected Christ, you will know him, however, for he will remain with you and will be in you, so you will have the Spirit because of the fact that you accepted Christ and that you're committed and you repent from your sins and now you're willing to follow his law. You can do away with his law. He's telling you right there. If you love me, you'll follow my law, of course, because that's what he told you to begin with, to follow his law. Okay. 
Redemption comes from Christ himself, but you had the Spirit of Christ. Abraham had the Spirit of Christ. That was the faith that Abraham had. It was Christ and redemption. So there's no change. Now, if you go down 14, let's just stay in 14 for a second. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Yeah, okay, so Father, Christ, the Spirit, all one thing, okay. Whoever, and this is 1421, whoever keeps my commands and regards them, he it is who loves me. Yes, you can't love Christ unless you're willing to do all these things that he commanded you to do from the very beginning. Have a proper justice system was number one. Before he even gave you the law, before Moses even wrote the law down, he already told you how to do a proper justice system. And then he harps on the fact that you're not doing the justice system based on his law all through scripture, all the way to the end of scripture. It's all about the same thing. Look at my chart on judgment. Okay. Yeah, that was what you were supposed to do. And you have to, the only way you can do that is to get together in these assemblies and make it happen. All right, well, but that also connects up to fifteen. Uh, I guess you start about nine. Just as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in his love with me. If you keep my commands, you will continue in my love. So if you don't keep his commands and don't follow his law and say, well, the law is done away with, then you don't love Christ and you don't love God. And any pastor that teaches that kind of stuff, well, you should point this out to him. Well, why does it keep telling me over and over and over that we have to follow his law? Oh, well, you see, now, if you're just a Gentile, you don't have to do that, right? Because only the Israelites, the people that were chosen from the foundation of the earth, right? Only the predestinated people had to do that. Oh, you're a heathen. You don't have to do that. No, no, no. No, he chose people, same people, chose them to believe on Christ from the very beginning, and he made them a royal priesthood to follow his law and have this justice system. And, you know, if you look around, well, uh, where is this proper justice system been on the face of the earth for the last couple thousand years? Haven't we only really seen it within these white Anglo-Saxon countries that have had any real type of justice? Because... You know, you go other places to heathen people that don't believe in Christ. Well, you don't see a, a proper justice system there, do you? And you don't see them calling on Christ, do you? And you don't see... No. No, you only see that in the white Anglo-Saxon Christian countries. Okay, well, duh. If you keep my commands, as I have kept the commands of my Father. You're still in 1510. So, Christ kept the commands... And he's saying, because I did it, you have to do it as well. And you don't love me if you don't do it. So it doesn't matter. Anybody that loves Christ today has to be willing to keep his commands and have a proper justice system and do all these things that he told you. Everything except sacrificing animals, right? Okay. And then you just scroll down. Uh, 15, or John 15, 15. But I have called you my friends. Okay, the only, call, only friends he ever called from the very beginning were the 12 tribes. Abraham and his posterity. Never said anybody else was his friends. Because everything I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. And he only made known to the 12 tribes prophecies all the way to the day. It's only the 12 tribes that he gave that power to. And that's why he called them, said, you are God's. Because he says specifically, only my people I do that to. Only my people I call. Only my people learn from me about this word. And only the ones uh, I've told have this law and are commanded to do this and will administer God's law at the end time. Only these people. And he never says it's going to be, oh, just going to go out and grab some heathen people and change them all of a sudden. 
No, it just continues on. I have chosen you, I've planted you, that you might take root and become fruitful. That was 16, so that whatever you may ask the Father in my name, he may grant it to you. I'm giving you this command in order that you may love one another. If the world hates you, okay, well, of course, it hates the Christian people and it hates proper justice because it, it likes the money and the wealth, which can only be maintained by criminal activity. But because you are not of the world, well, I have chosen you from out of the world. Okay, but it hasn't changed to heathen people all of a sudden. If they persecute me, go down to 20, they'll persecute you. But they'll do all this because of my name, because they knew not him who sent me, right? They don't know the Father, so they don't know the Son. Exact same thing he said the Jews against Christ. That's who he's talking about. I, had I not come and spoken to them, 1522, well, who did he come and speak to? Came to the leadership of his people, who received the law by an agency of angels, and are supposed to be the authority, they're supposed, they have all the scrolls, they have it all written down, you go in the synagogue, right? But now, they have no excuse for their sin, verse 22. Those who hate me also hate my father. Well, there you go. Had I not done among them deeds which have not been done by no one else. Well, who, where he, who, who's he talking to? Well, he's only talking to one group of people. One group. He's not talking to the Roman leadership, and he's not talking to all that. He's just talking to the Jews against Christ who don't who opted out. So they're going to be terrors taken out of the book of life, and that was a prophecy all the way back to Exodus, where they came out. All the way back to the golden calf incident. Same group of people hasn't changed. Never talked to anyone else. They would not have been guilty of sin, though, he's saying, if he didn't come point it out to them. As it is, they have witnessed and have both hated both me and my father. So they witnessed all the people, you know, he raised from the dead. They witnessed all the healing. They didn't want any part of that. They didn't want the person who could heal people and raise people from the dead and could resurrect them. Now, what kind of people have, okay, well, you think, well, geez, no one would do that, right? No. No, they did do that. They like their money, their power, their authority. And there's the posterity of those who liked all that. Posterity of those who rejected Christ from the golden calf fort. As wrote in prophecy, he said he'd get rid of their kids. He did get rid of their kids. Or at least he will when he comes back. That's what you're up against. So it doesn't do any good to talk to them. I mean, you know, you can witness to them all you want. Doesn't do any good. <laughs> because if he brings one of them to Christ, he, he chose it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, you can go witness to them all you want. I'm just saying he's the one that chooses and it's based on their heart, you know, within them. So... I don't know how much real good it does to go and witness to people who are not, uh, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. But, you know, and much less, and that's Jews against Christ, much less just going out to the world. And, of course, the world is going to follow his law because they're going to be, uh, 12 tribes are going to administer it, and it's just, they're going to follow it. Everybody's going to follow it. You already said, you won't eat. You don't follow it, so okay, they're gonna follow. So, if they follow it now, that's good. And then he makes it very specific who he's talking to in 16. All this I've told you in order that you shall not falter, they will expel you from their synagogue. Same group of people he's talking about, you hate him without a cause, didn't want the spirit, didn't want the things he had. And they will do this because I neither recognize the Father nor myself. I have told you this, however, so that when the time comes, time does come for them, you may be reminded that I told you of them. Okay, well, where is this time coming for them? That's the separation of the wheat and tares at the end time. Okay. 
And he talks about the helper, the spirit. And what will it do? Bring conviction to the world about sin and about rec rectification and about justice. Think proper justice system. So that's 16.8. They have not confided in me. About a rectification when I go to the Father, so a resurrection, you shall see me no longer. About justice when the leader... Okay, well, there you go. So when is the leader of this conspiracy convicted? Jeez, we should look and see what that says in you know, King James. But, of course, when is the leader convicted? Well, that's the judgment day. Right? Because in Revelation chapter 20, he's put in, into bondage, but then it, it says he's let out, which is crazy, but that's what it says. After a thousand years, let out. So then he goes and gets some more, cons some more people into attacking the holy people, right? Which is this uh, Jerusalem, modern day Jerusalem. This is before New Jerusalem. This is the people rebuilding and, you know, their country after it was completely destroyed. So the house of God is rebuilding. And uh, then at the end, of course, that's just the context. That's the, the order it's in. Some people look at it a little different, but... You know, I don't argue the point. I just look at the way it says it, and we'll go with that. And if I can figure out it's something else, then we'll look at it. I just go by quotes, cross-references, and try to put it together. And make sense out of it. Okay. At any rate, when the leader of this conspiracy is convicted, that's when these people will be brought conviction to them that didn't recognize the Father that he was telling them about, that he said he, <clears throat> that hated him without a cause, they have no excuse for their sins, that he's witness to. Okay, but he didn't walk through the whole world, he didn't go down to Africa, he didn't go to China, he just went there and witnessed to these people. Because this context is in Psalms from the very beginning. Jews against Christ versus Jews for Christ. It's in all the other books of Scripture. It's all in the same context. All your quotes give you the same context. So it's not about the world. It's not globalism. Pastors, they just, you know, look at what other people teach, and they go off and teach it, and they don't ever put it in context. Just give them the video, let them look it up, and either they agree or they'll just do whatever they want, I guess. <clears throat> Psalms 3519. I prefer just to try to teach it in context. But no traitors triumph on me. It says uh, it says hated me without a cause. Mine doesn't mine looks at it a little different. A little different wording in Ferrari, but it says the same thing. But it says uh, the means of revolt. So the people that revolted were the Jews against Christ. The whole world didn't revolt. They didn't know anything about Christ. The only ones that revolt are the ones that were told to follow his law and revolted from his law. That's the context. So it's Jews against Christ. Twelve tribes. Israelites against Christ. However you want to say it. Okay? So you can read that and then uh, yeah, and if you just back up against uh, Psalms 35 against my opponents seize your shield and come to my aid. okay well that's the opponents again were Jews against Christ and then they made these military coalitions which I read the other one I gave you a list of the people that uh, they had made a coalition with and agreements or contracts or whatever so 69-4 so they go out and they find other people to attack their own brethren and crazy but yay that's what Jews against Christ do they, they get everybody else to fight their fights for them if they can pay them off so in other words they get mercenaries that's the whole idea all right 69 start at the beginning save me for the seas go over my soul I'm sunk in the mire let's sweep along I'm weary with crying my throat's inflamed okay well, in 16, okay, we read uh, this other part right below, which was from John 2.17, so we were in the same uh, 
little group of verses right here. Alright, so, yeah, just back up to uh, John 2.17 and look at that. And uh, Psalm 69.9, yeah. So there you go. Same section. So we just read that. Alright, let's go on. Put your finger back here in Isaiah. Oh, that's 66.14, so that's right at the very end. 66.14, yeah. That's all the way up. So, let's see what that says. Christ redeems Jews for Christ at the end time, yeah. Return from captivity, 12 tribes of standard. Same thing Isaiah teaches, chapter 40. <laughs> all the way through the standard. Just look at my chart. The standard, the standard, the standard. And through Jeremiah about the standard and the other prophecies about the standard. The standard's only the 12 tribes. It's not the world. You're just anyone that believes. Okay, Christ redeems the 12 tribes. Let's look, let's look at uh, John 16.22. Alright, so, so we were just on at the beginning of 16, just a minute ago, about making the point, it's Jews against Christ, who the context was. Then he talks about the Helper, which is His Spirit. Then the leader of the conspiracy, that was verse 11. Okay. I just read all that. Spirit of truth. See, and then it says he. Still talking about this helper. This spirit of truth. He will instruct you. For his utterances do not proceed from himself. So it refers to the spirit of truth as a he. That's him. In other words, that's him. So physically... His body went up, but he's infused himself with his people from that point with the spirit of truth. So the ones that have the spirit of truth that you can't buy off, those are your judges. Those are the guys, once you figure out who that is in your church, and you're sure these guys have the spirit of truth and they teach properly and they teach Bible in context and all these kind of things. Well, those guys, all right, well, you, you know, you can see who they are in your church. So, when you go to elect them, you run them for these offices in your government. You put them as judges. It's important, uh, just as important to have a judge as it is a governor or anything else. So, everybody has their own capability, whatever their background is. You pick out these best guys and you put them over you. And then you follow their decisions because that's why you chose them. Right? Just like Romans 13 says, you follow their decisions. But that's after you chose them. And put the best guys in office and did what Christ told you to do from the beginning. You don't ignore the whole Bible and say we don't have to do any of this stuff. And then we can just put the mafia up there and but now we got to follow them. No, that's, that's, not, that's not the context. The context is follow my law. That's the context. Yeah. Alright. Sorrow turned to joy. Starting about 17. So they're still talking about Jesus, about his remark, about he's going away. And then he's talking really about the end time there. Uh, 19, only a little while you shall not see me, and again after a little while you shall see me. Yeah, well, he says a little while. All right, well, it's been a couple thousand years, but it is a little while to him. It was like, you know, two days. Okay. Tell you most surely, you'll weep and grieve while the world will rejoice. You will be grieved, but your grief will be transformed to gladness. Okay. So you'll weep and grieve because you're judged at the end time while the world will rejoice. Remember what it said in Revelation chapter 11? Yeah. The two witnesses were destroyed. The world rejoiced. This is the context. Right there. You're going to weep and grieve because your country was just destroyed and there's only a few of you left, the remnant, because the rest of them won't listen. They won't do what's right, and it doesn't matter what you tell them. Okay? It's your job to do, tell them and all that, but if they don't listen, there's nothing you can do about it. The best thing you can do is put all this in the context for them, try to show them what the truth is. All right, and it talks about the woman in labor, right? But then, of course, you know, talking about the bridegroom at the end of Revelation 19, 
and she no longer remembers the pain, for at the present you are also in distress, but I will see you again. So, second return of Christ, and your hearts will rejoice. Isaiah 66, 14. So that's the second return of Christ, when he will see you again. Okay. And none shall rob you of your joy. And at that, at that time, you will request nothing from me. I tell you truly, you should ask the Father for anything in my name, and he will grant it to you. Well, that, is that true in the last 2,000 years then? You just ask God anything? No, you'll be able to do it then, because that's when God's law is written in your heart, and you won't violate his law. And you'll be administrators over his law. That's when in New Jerusalem, see, that's what he's talking about. When you see him again. That's when to start. That's when you're brought out from, and everybody in the world recognizes who you are that last time when Christ returns. Well, a strong arm brings your people out of captivity, and then you go back, you rebuild your country, and everybody starts helping you out because they now they know who you are. They can see it, how it's all going to come about. Well, no, exactly. It's not definitive on everything. And then he says, verse 25, and this is important. All these things I have told you in figures of speech. Okay, there's about 12 different types of figures of speech in, you know, in the Bible, starting from the beginning. There's prophecy, there's parables, there's allegory, there's metaphors, and I've got a whole list of them on one of my charts somewhere where I list them a lot. Oh, enigmas. Isaiah was, they said he spoke in enigmas. Oh, and Ezekiel, yeah, and enigmas, because no one could understand it. It was about some far future event that no one had any clue what he was talking about. Yeah, okay. So it's 12 different types of figures of speech, and that's why people read the Bible and they don't they don't have a clue. And I made up my own. I said, prophecy within a prophecy. I, maybe it's already got a name. Prophecy of the first coming, or within a prophecy of the second coming, and all those things. I've already pointed some of those out, and you can see it if you're paying attention. Or separate prophecy. I said there were separate prophecy, one within another. One might have already happened, but now it's talking about an end time on the second part of it or whatever. It's crazy. So, yeah, it's very difficult. That's why only his people can figure this out because only Christ can, you know, connect these dots in your brain. I mean, you can read it. It doesn't make any sense. That's why so many people up to today. And then he, just because you're Christian people and you don't, person, you don't figure it out doesn't mean anything either. The point is, he brings the truth out when he's ready for people to understand it. Then he enlightens someone, just like John the Baptist. You choose John the Baptist, you give him the information, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just like he chose Paul. He chose a Paul. He told, uh, taught Paul for 17 years, maybe. Okay. Well, he knew things. He knew all the stuff about the Bible. He was a chief priest, but he didn't know... <laughs> Obviously, the important stuff, and Christ just had to reteach him. Okay, it's not that he had to go out and read the Bible for himself and learn the Bible. That wasn't it. He knew all that, but he didn't understand context. So, when Christ puts it in context for you, then you understand it. That's what my point has been from the beginning. We're not teaching in context. And there you go. That's why at the end... In time when Christ returns. That's the context. Well, I think it just says that. Uh, the time has come. I'll no longer speak to you figuratively. In other words, in figures of speech. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not need to tell you what I myself will ask the Father. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and believe that I came from the Father. Okay. So that was plain, but he keeps explaining, I mean, we just want to go on into chapter 17 and read it all, but he keeps on, if you just read it, he keeps on explaining what he's talking about, and it's in time. And he says, I haven't lost any, I pray for you, and so on, and he just Keeps on explaining this. Oh, and then he gets down. Because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Oh, wow. Okay. That's 1724. You loved me 
may be in them. And I in them. Yeah. Let's get down to the end of 17. Well, that's the Spirit of Christ in them. So that's, okay. But Christ bodily went up to heaven. is going to return. But the Spirit was left behind, which is Christ. Okay. Which existed from the beginning. And that's the faith of Abraham. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go back look at Isaiah 66, 14. Well, what's the context? Chapter 66. Well, it continues, obviously, from 65 and 64 and 63 and so on and so forth. As you go back, you can clearly see it's talking about 12 tribes and it doesn't change. Zion, Jerusalem, servants, the tribes, resurrection for the tribes, redemption, people formed in his womb. Just look back. You should have all the stuff highlighted. So you can just flip through and see it. All right, but let's just go back to about 65.8. I think you're pretty sure you were, we were there before. It talks about uh, his servants. He'll refrain from destroying the whole. In other words, he's going to keep the remnant, the Jews for Christ, that have kept his word to the end. Verse 9, and will bring out from Jacob a seed. All right, well, that's uh, pretty specific, because and from Judah an heir from my hill, and he shall inherit my chosen. Okay, well, the chosen is Jacob's seed, the posterity of Jacob, the heir of Judah is Christ, as everybody knows. Genesis 49.10 is where we got the beginning of it, technically. But in reality, I said it's really Melchizedek, way back in 14. And right there in 15 is where he promised himself to Abraham, which is the faith of Abraham. Okay, But you who leave the life, verse 11, so there's your Jews against Christ. You'll call on me, but I won't... Uh, Listen, and you get down to 14, vexation. To my chosen, your name shall be left as a curse. The great Lord will kill you. Okay, Jews against Christ, you're going to be killed by Christ. Right? Same thing he said in Luke. Bring them before me and kill them at my feet. Well, he's going to give that, that he says he do it. Actually, he's going to empower his administrators of his law to do it. That's what the 12 tribes are going to do. He's going to say, well, okay, there they are. These are the ones that caused all the problem. No matter what you told them, they wouldn't follow the law. They're your brothers, but, you know, they're terrors, so, okay, minister my law. Right? Twelve tribes, we're going to do it. Same thing they did way back, you know. They had Levites. Killed, what was it, 23,000 at one time, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right about back at Mount Sinai. But we give a new name to his friends. That's also in Revelation. You'll get this white a stone or token, one Bible said. Uh, mine says stone, so you'll be given a white stone with a name that only you will understand, right? Then who blesses on earth will bless the true God. Yep, yeah, okay, at that point. When new skies I create and a new earth. Verse 16. All right. Well, that hasn't happened. All right. Not yet. So I think in time, when, you know, we'll be remediated and we'll get rid of all this nuclear waste and all these uh, stuff that pollutes the planet. And then we'll go back and start using, uh, you know, something non-polluting. Who knows what it'll be, but he'll, uh, he'll help you. You gotta realize we, uh, at some point, uh, we were cutting stones so uh, closely and so accurately, uh, you couldn't put a piece of paper in between. So, obviously, we had uh, knowledge of how to do things. And then we will again. And all the old things won't be brought up. Yeah, after they're, so after they're judged, that's it. I don't have to remember all that. For Jerusalem, I will create a delight. And her her people a joy. Okay. Not worldly context. Again, same context. The heir of Judah. Posterity of Jacob. There's your context right there. 65. And we go up to 20. A hundred year old, when he dies, will be like a youth. Yeah. 
Okay, we'll think about Abraham, because Abraham was brought back in time and made like a youth. So they, Abraham and Sarah, so they could have children. Like I said, they were backed up, brought back to youth. Everybody witnessed it, which is why they called Abraham a god, or, you know, regarded him as a god living among them. Because that's the only person they knew. And know anybody else that could do that. Like the days of a tree shall be my my people. So no change. My race above. Jerusalem I will rejoice. Verse 19. Be glad in my race. The chosen. The race. Alright. And when is this? 24, 25, the wolf and the lamb feed together, and the lion eat straw like an ox. They shall not injure or hurt. Same context as said before about the uh, child being able to lead a lamb or uh, a lion around. Yeah, and all that. All, it's all back there in Isaiah. Same context, so just up here. Look at your cross, reference. It'll take you right back to those verses. we have already said the same thing. Okay. But I honor the meek and gentle in spirit who follow my law. This is that. Chapter 66, verse 2. Okay. The ones that follow his law, that's the remnant of the 12 tribes. Heavens are my, starts right out. Heavens are my throne, the earth my footstool. And of course, that goes to Acts uh, 750, it's quoted. So, like I said, if you look at the other chart, that kind of helps because then you can refer back to uh, that's the right one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just highlighting that. You can refer back to uh, things that are in the same uh, group of verses. So, you want to know what's in 66, for example. You can kind of go back a few chapters and look at what's there and Okay, there's Acts 750, quote 66.1. So you should look at Acts 750. Let's just go do that. And over here. Acts 750. Okay, let's see what that said. Hmm. The heaven is my throne, the earth is still for my feet. What has she built for me? It's not the hand made. You stiff necked and uncircumcised heathen and heart and ears. You are always in opposition to the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, there the heathen were what? Well, you can see. Just look back on Acts. You can see the context of who he's talking to. 40 years in the desert. He's talking about the Israel people. Son, children of Israel. Then he talks about the golden calf incident. Forty years in the desert. O house of Israel, and you erected the tent of Moloch. Okay, these are the ones. Like I said, taken out of the book of life. So, leadership. So you can just look and see what it is. You get down to the end. 51. As your forefathers were, so are you. Which of the prophets have not your forefathers persecuted? They murdered those who foretold Think, gave a prophecy of the just one, the Christ, of whom you and now yourselves become the betrayers and murderers. So I told you about Christ. Christ is here, and now you kill them. And those were your forefathers, so you're their posterity. Right. Except you back up and look at the quotes. They were taken out of the book of life. Right? Okay. Even you who received the law by means of the agency of angels. So he came to you, he did everything, he brought angels to you to, uh, you know, you're rich, you're noble, you're all of these things, but you're children of the devil. And uh, no matter what I did, even sending angels to you to teach you my word, did everything I could possibly do, and you still rejected. You see? So, if you think you're going to convert these people, go ahead. Yeah, it was Stephen's defense. Paul tried the same thing. He had, but, you know, he did have some success. So, I'm saying, he did have some success. There were even some leadership and all that. But the success you have are the ones who, you know, uh, like I said, uh, God decides and he'll help them understand what you're teaching him so you teach it in context and then he'll he'll the ones that uh, 
Yeah, he wants, he'll, you know, you're just a messenger. He'll open their eyes. Well, and they killed him. Okay, and they'll kill people, and they'll continue to kill people, because that's all they can do. They, they can't argue the point. All they can really do is kill you. <laughs> Unless, you know, Christ the shield says, well, no, I'm not going to let you kill him. Okay, so, you better hope you qualify for that. <clears throat> so let's go back to Isaiah 66. Talk about those who fear my commands, follow his law. All right, that which I hated, they chose, verse 4. So that's what it was talking about. But here the Lord's promise you, fearing his word, the Jews for Christ, and report to your brothers, Jews against Christ, who hate and drive out. Well, there you go. Jews against Christ, Jews for Christ. That his power the Lord will display and appear to your pleasure, but to their disgrace. Because they rejected him, they killed him, they killed the prophets, the forefathers killed the prophets, they killed the apostles. They kept saying, no, no, this isn't him, this is the right one, because he didn't fulfill these prophecies. No, he's going to fulfill them, but not until the end. So, simple thing to understand. Christ could have explained it, but he didn't when he was there. All right, and then, that's where he talks about this nation to be born in a day. Yeah, the nation to be born in a day is all 12 tribes when they're brought back from captivity. And as he says, thus Zion travailed, brought forth her sons. All right, well, that's when I was telling you uh, that all of these uh, uh, remnant are going to have all these children. And then when these are brought back from captivity, it's a prophecy. Just look back to Isaiah and read it. All right. Be glad with Jerusalem. Okay, but that's New Jerusalem. Verse 10. And laugh all her friends. That's New Jerusalem. It's not, not the dirt over there. It's New Jerusalem where all the Christian people are. Alright. <clears throat> like a river or clover. Clothe her in peace. Wealth of nations. Pour out like a brook. Okay. Wealth of Gentiles. So, <clears throat> you can look at it one way or the other, but it's... Um, he already pointed out that these non-Israelites are going to be helping you because now they know who you are and they can see it, however that comes about. Okay, well, you, apparently the way it comes about is just like it said, you got this tornado of fire, it's going to burn up the heathen and all these that are against Christ, I don't know. So you're going to see it, you're just going to recognize it. You're going to know it was him. It said lightning flash from east to west, so you're going to see it, you're going to realize who it is. Everybody's going to see it and understand it. And, and he kind of says right here, For see the Lord coming like a fire. Okay, and his chariot rush on like the wind. So whirlwind of fire, tornado of fire. Just the same thing you had in, in, when they came out of Egypt. To send forth his anger in heat, and his wrath like the flame of a fire. And he says, rush on like the wind. His tornado wind, same context, a whirlwind was what it said, which is a tornado. In previous prophecy, okay? For by fire the Lord will decide, and the whole man can by his heat, as the many the Lord will destroy. Who's destroying all the many? Okay. Yeah, Christ can come back, get rid of the ones who are against him. And the mercenaries who were hired to fight for the ones who were against him. So, just like it says, in the 19, that's what you're going to see. It's flame of tornado fire that's going to go out. Kill everybody. Can't breathe if you're standing in a tornado of fire. <clears throat> the eaters of the flesh of the hog, and yeah, whatever. For I know their plans and tricks. Verse 18 Then I will come to collect all the heathen and tongues who will stand and gaze on my might. Well, there you go. So you're going to see it and gaze on it and recognize it. And I will give to them. A standard. Well, the standard, of course, is always his people, the royal priesthood. And send to the nations in troops. And it says Gentiles, probably, in some Bibles. Hmm, not heard my news, not seen my power. My glory will tell to those tribes from all the heathen your brothers bring back. So, your brothers being brought back are those that were sent into captivity. Of course, the remnants, the ones he's keeping obviously not choosing non-israelites 
He's choosing these remnant of the 12 tribes. And he's bringing back their brothers, the ones that are still alive. And it says, on horses and chariots, verse 20, wagons, mules, camels, to Jerusalem, my holy hill, not to the dirt, but to New Jerusalem, or the current Jerusalem, even before New Jerusalem, where the Christian people are, this remnant of people that believe on Christ, not to the dirt over there, which doesn't believe on Christ. It never has. Not in the last couple thousand years. Okay, to Jerusalem, as Israel's sons bring their gifts. Oh, okay, so it's about Israel's sons. We know who that is. And from them I will take for my Levites and priests. Okay. From the twelve tribes, right? Says the Lord, when I make the new skies and new earth to stand before me. So your name and race shall abide from new moon to new moon, from Sabbath to Sabbath, just like it has been. All men shall bow before me. I shall go out and look on the bodies of men who revolted from me, Jews against Christ and others who fought for them, hirelings, mercenaries, and that they are abhorred of mankind. So, there you go. Same context, doesn't change from 12 tribes. All right. So we'll end there, <clears throat> and uh, <sighs> maybe it seems like I spend too much time, but that's context. Psalms 22 relates to the Romans casting dice. Yes, okay, so we know that. That's the prophecy that it mentions. And then the prophecy that the Romans wouldn't break the bones of Christ. So still, we know 22 is about Christ. We know 34 is about Christ and so forth. They shall gave us upon them whom they have pierced is about Christ. Okay, and it makes sense that all this would be about Christ. So when you're reading Psalms, you should, you know, highlight or write in there that oh, this is about Christ, that's about Christ, this is about you know, put your context in there so when you just read through, you notice it right off the bat. So you don't have to wonder about what the text is talking to. So, at any rate, we came, uh, we were on part 23 right now, video 23. So we'll come back with video 24 and that's where we'll pick up. Thanks for watching.